Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Hope you guys are excited. We are going to take on the Orc King. Uh, I did forget one thing in the last video, and that is I didn't draw an enemy power for him. So let's go ahead and reveal it. Oh yeah, okay, he's armored. He has plus one armor. That means right now on his offensive side, this is the offensive side, yeah, he has three defense or three armor, <laughs> and he'll roll one blue die, and he's immune to stun. So as much as I feel like I should have Icarus go first, I think what I'm going to do instead is have Ariel go first. <laughs> is that a good idea? I don't know. What we're going to do is we're going to have her move one step here, and we're going to go ahead and pick up these 10 coins for free as a free action. We are then for free going to use our magic bolt and we're going to use the level four and have an enemy suffer two HP. That goes through any defense. So the orc king now has two damage. Don't forget he has blood rage. So each time this enemy suffers damage, he gains plus one hit until time phase. Ugh. Next, we're gonna go ahead and use our dancing lights here. We're gonna throw some lights in his eyes. We're gonna use the level four ability. So it's gonna have a two round cooldown, but his attack will be minus two and he has minus two armor. And this is also a free action. I need to remember since Ariel just did damage to the York King, the menace token is now with her. We're then gonna have her move another space right here. <laughs> this is risky, but that's because I wanna use my sun strike. She has to be within range one. So we're within range one. We are going to focus, so that will give us four automatic successes. We'll roll one red, three blue. We could potentially get lethal or blind. That would be awesome. We have our four auto successes. Let's give our dice a good roll. And hmm, we've got one, two, I really wanted a star. So I think I am going to use our arcane robe here to reroll one hit die. This one doesn't have a star, but it's a hit. So I think I'm going to take the chance and re-roll one of these blue dice. Come on. I dropped that one. Let's see about this one. Yes, that will work. This is a pretty epic shot. We're hitting him for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total damage. And we are going to activate blind. So we're going to use a lightning bolt and a star to blind him. A blinded enemy, if activated, must apply the plus rule as normal by moving and using powers, but without performing any attack that requires line of sight. At the end of the activation, discard the blinded token. So he will use his plus power, but he won't attack. This is where things get a little complicated. Let's make sure we understand how much armor he has. So he has two armor, plus one is three, but we've negated two of them. So he actually only has one armor and he gets to roll one blue die. So one armor will block one of these hits this one and then we'll go ahead and move these quick to roll our one blue die for defense let's grab one and it doesn't look like he has any ability to make a lightning bolt a success i don't see anything so we actually hit him for all that damage that means he already has taken eight out of the 30 damage with that shot <laughs> ariel beautiful hit However, he's now going to increase his attack by plus one. She negated him by minus two, which is why I had a minus one because he had the plus one before. So oh, I'm just going to take this token off because it was at a minus one before. So right now his attack is regular because just to make sure you understand, he got a plus one when he suffered the two damage. Then she subtracted him by two. So he was down to negative one on his hit. But because he took damage, he'll move it up to no effect on his attack or uh, on his attack because he took that damage. That's the blood rage. Because Ariel dealt damage to him yet again, he, she's going to increase the menace token to two. Uh-oh. <laughs> Remember that the Book of Secrets told us to activate the Orc King for our first encounter. So we're not going to draw an encounter card. We're just going to activate the Orc King. First thing we're going to do is defensive stance. At the beginning of this, of this activation, if he has suffered four plus health, yeah, he just suffered eight damage, flip this card to the def defensive stance, and you're going to keep all the same tokens. From here, because he's blinded, thank you so much, Ariel, he is only going to activate his plus and not do any attack. Move up to two areas towards the closest hero. So that's Ariel. And then attack the closest hero in line of sight. So we're not going to do that. He's just going to move into Ariel's location. After this, he is going to discard the blinded. He's no longer blinded by that attack. He's going to move himself in with Ariel right here. Okay, who to activate next? That's the question. There's two things I want you to see here. First of all, he has a counterattack, and that says if a hero attacks um, at range zero and does not deal any damage to him, then he gets to attack them with his twin axe. Also, he has a reaction that all attacks against him are minus two. 
So you always get minus two uh, uh, hits on him. And he still has the two armor. Oh, actually, he has no armor thanks to Ariel. He is still immune to stun. And he has two blue dice this time. And a lightning bolt is plus one defense. You can see his defense is much better when he's in his defensive stance. I think the next to go will actually be Thorgar. I know I'm having Icarus go right at the end, but <laughs> I have a plan. Hopefully it'll work. I'm going to have Thorgar move one, two to move into here, focus his attack, and swing his Master Thunder Strike. Remember how I said he had no armor? That's wrong. He has one armor. Don't forget that because he is armored. So he has the one armor here, even though the other two are negated thanks to Ariel. Right now we have four automatic successes. I'm going to remove two of those because of his reaction. So we're going to roll one red and two blue and hope to goodness we do some damage. Otherwise he's going to attack us with his twin axe. So let's give him a roll. And wow, that is a terrible roll. So what I'm going to do is use our ability here, Divine Aid. Once per round, target hero, which is going to be himself, can roll up to one die per soul rank divided by two. So his soul rank is four. He can actually re-roll two dice. He's going to re-roll this red, then this blue. This other blue, useless. Come on, come on. We need something good here. Okay, that's, that's definitely better. We have a total of one, two, three, four hits, and we have a critical. We did not get the AoE, and we did not get to KO him, which is a bummer. But I will totally take the critical. He has one armor left, so I'm going to take this away. I'm going to draw the critical first, though, before we do anything else, so I don't forget that. So let's draw. Let's see what he gets. He gets minus one hit. So I'm going to put that on his, on his uh, sheet to denote that when he attacks, he gets minus one to his attack. Now he has to defend against these three hits. The max amount he can roll is two blue dice. We'll give him a roll. He blocked two of them, one lightning bolt for one and the shield for two. So he took a whopping one point of damage. But he took one point of damage. I will take it. That means he will not be able to counterattack. <laughs> and that means that this menace token gets flipped down to one, but is still with Ariel. Next, we're going to have Thorgar take a little bit of a chance. We're going to use his blessed hammers. He can do this because it's an action, and he's only used one action. He has two total actions he can use. So he's going to try and attack the Orc King with this. <laughs> We're going to see if we can do anything. I really don't want that Menace token on Ariel, but we have to be able to do damage to actually get that to move. Uh, so we're going to have to see. We right now have one automatic success, but don't forget he negates two of our successes. So we're going to roll one blue and one red. Come on, come on. Okay, that gives us two hits. Oh, we've got another. We can get another critical. Or we could bash him out of our space. No, I think I'm going to do the critical. I like the criticals too much. So let's go ahead and draw a critical for him first. And come on, be something good. Be something good. What is this? This is, oh, <laughs> he's going to be blinded again. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. So that means he won't be able to attack. He'll just use the plus, which means he's just going to stay where he is and not even be able to attack. Oh, that's awesome. Here's the problem, though. If you look here, we have three hits. He has his counterattack ability that is going to reduce two of those hits. And then he has one armor, which reduces this hit. So we didn't hit him. Now, I think... Even though he's blinded, I believe he can still do this counterattack. So this says, if the hero attacks at range 0 and does not damage it, then he makes an attack with Twin Axe. Twin Axe is here. He gets one auto success, and it's going to be... Wait, is he controlling? No, he's not. He's not dominating, so it'll be one auto success, two red dice. If he gets a lightning bolt, we've got lethal. And he has impact, which says, if triggered, unless save, uh, that means that the uh, hero becomes KO'd and suffers a critical. I also didn't mention, but projectiles you actually get to keep until you roll a gremlin when you activate it. So since I did not roll a gremlin, we get to keep this. Thank goodness. Right now, he is attacking with one auto success. However, don't forget, we have minus one due to this critical that he took from before. So that's going to get rid of the auto success. He is not dominating the area because there are two there and he's considered three. So he's just going to roll two red dice and he gets only one success. Well, guess what? Thorgar has a green shield to block that. But unfortunately, the uh, menace token did not move. <laughs> Let's go ahead and draw our encounter card. And we have activate two enemies. Well, we just have to activate the orc king. And all he's going to do is use his plus ability. It says here, move up to two areas towards the closest hero. He's already there. Attack the closest hero. He will not do that because he's blinded. But then we'll discard the blinded token. I almost forgot this attack includes impact, so I need to see if uh, Thorgar can save. If he doesn't, he becomes KO'd and suffers a critical. Thorgar's save is a star, and we got it. <laughs> almost a shield, but we got a star.
This Orc King's minus two successes is brutal, you guys. Uh, for Icarus's final activation for this round, he's going to dash to stand up and go one, two to move into here. We are one, two, three, four to his three, so no one has a domination, but we can definitely add one for our focus. We have a total of four auto successes, but I'm going to remove two of them thanks to his uh, reaction. And so we have two successes here, rolling four blue dice. Ooh, that's actually not bad. Oh, I was hoping that we were going to be able to do this. We are! Never mind, we are. That's a lightning bolt. We have a total of five hits, and then if you look here, with a lightning bolt and a star, we can ignore his armor. His armor is only one, but at least we don't have to reduce this by another one. So he has no armor, and he's going to be slow. A slowed enemy will select its behavior rule as usual during its next activation, but it will only perform the first sentence of the rule. That means until the first period. We've done this before. I love it. So right now we have five damage coming at him. He'll be able to roll two blue dice for defense, and if he gets a lightning bolt, that's also considered a defense. So we'll roll. He got one light, actually got two, but you can only use one of them. So he takes four damage, you guys. He was at nine. This will put him at 13. <laughs> awesome. That attack did do damage to the Orc King, so now Icarus has the Menace Token, which is what we want. We'll draw our encounter card, and let's see what we get. Activate all red enemies, otherwise activate all lowest rank. Well, there's only the purple one, so he is going to activate. Because he's slowed, he's only going to do the top part here. Attack with Twin Axe. That's it. We don't have to worry about this other item here, thank goodness. And his Twin Axe we've seen before, one auto success and two red. But because of the critical that he has, which is minus one success, he's just going to roll two red dice. That will do the impact, so we have to remember to do a save at the end. And we have lethal as well. Rolling two red dice. Let's see, he gets one success and one lightning, so that means it's lethal. The advantage for us is lethal skips blue dice for defense and armor for defense, but it does not skip magic defense. We have two magic defense, so we can use one of these to block that lethal attack. We are still going to have to try and save. If we don't, we're KO'd, so we'll roll two. Oh, look at that. We saved with both of them for Icarus, thanks to his lucky, so we don't have to worry about being KO'd and drawing a critical. Now, though, we'll remove this slowed token. We'll move to that event phase. We'll go ahead and just discard this card, and now we'll move to the time phase. Unfortunately, this means that his minus two armor goes away. Bummer. And we have our offensive stance. In each time phase, flip this card to the offensive side, keeping all wounds and tokens, and recharge one. Well, he didn't use that power this time. I was able to keep him away from healing himself, but he's back to his offensive side, which is good because he won't try and heal himself until he takes four damage. So let's keep trying to hammer on him. Besides the refresh of some of our magic armor, the biggest thing that we're going to do is move up Ariel's powers, but none of them <laughs> refresh to full. Next round they will, so we're going to have to survive this round with probably not doing a ton of damage, just keeping Ariel safe, and then after that, boom, we're going to be able to hit him hard while he uses her ice attack, we'll be able to reduce his armor again, yeah, so we're just going to have to survive this round and then maybe do another big push the following round. Right now we're in a little bit of a pickle. This Orc King, if he uses his zero range attack, he will use what we call double blow. That double blow will attack everyone in the area. It has AOE range zero. I really don't want Ariel to die from his attack. <laughs> So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try and bash him out of this space. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to use Thorgar's first action. So I'm going to activate him. He's going to use his Blessed Hammers. Using the Blessed Hammers, we have one auto success and we'll roll. Yes, there's a lightning bolt. So we can use that for critical. Heck, we could blind him. Oh, that makes blind him would mean he would just do a single attack. No, I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm going to use the lightning bolt to bash him. I'm going to bash him out of our room, or, or out of our area. We then have a total of three hits. Well, he's got three armor. Two armor on his card on the offensive side, and then one from his armored ability. So he takes no damage, which is fine. The big thing is we're pushing him out of our space. Let's go ahead and bash him over here. Then what we can do is we can turn around. <laughs> we can move in here, and we can attack with our thunder strike. We'll use our second action to focus. So we have four auto successes, one red and two blue. We'll roll them up. Okay, ooh, well, we can actually KO him. That's gonna make all of his armor zero. <laughs> so I was hoping for a critical. I could try and reroll, but I, I think I'm gonna take the two stars. 
two stars, AoE, that doesn't matter, but he is going to be KO'd. That means his three armor is nil. Then we're going to hit him for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage. Wow, that's a little better than what I was thinking. He only has one blue die for defense. He gets one, so he takes six damage. With that six damage, he is at 19 damage. He only has 11 health left, you guys. Now with that though, he did take damage, so he has that blood rage. He's gonna get plus one to his uh, attack, but that's just gonna be negating out this. So right now, he has uh, no positives or negatives to his attack. Now we get to draw an encounter card. Oh, come on, be nice to us. We have activate all wounded enemies. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely wounded. I should mention that the Menace token should have moved to Thorgar because he did wound that uh, Orc King. First thing that's going to happen is, since he took more than four damage that round, that was not exactly what I was planning, but he did, we're going to flip to his defensive side. We're then going to have him use Attack with Twin Axe. If engaged with two plus heroes, he's not. So he's actually only engaged with one. So he'll just attack with Twin Axe. Wow. He'll get two auto successes because he does have Supremacy and he'll roll two red dice. Let's see what he gets. He rolls. Wow, he still doesn't get a lightning bolt. I just, there's a bunch of lightning bolts on these. He gets three successes. The star doesn't do anything. Thorgar has one magic defense, so that will block one. He's got one armor, so that will block one of these. And then he'll roll a blue die for the third one. And he gets a lightning bolt, which with the scale armor is considered one defense. Perfect. Our next hero to activate will be Icarus. We're going to bring him in here with Thorgar so he can attack with his sea fin. We'll use an action to get four automatic successes. One, two, three, plus one for the focus is four. But then we have to reduce it by two because of his all minus two. We then get to roll four blue dice. And I'm really hoping for that lightning and star again. Come on, lightning star. Yes, we got it. Lightning Star, he's going to be slowed again, which is amazing. I'm so glad I changed this weapon. I really like this weapon. And we're going to ignore all of his armor. So he gets to roll two blue dice against one, two, three, four, five. Five total damage. So it'll be five damage minus, let's roll these. Uh, lightning bolts are considered uh, defense, so minus one. So he takes four damage for this. Adding 4 to the 19, he has 23 damage. 7 more, you guys, and we have taken him out. We'll then reveal our next encounter card, and we have activate all engaged enemies. Yeah, he's engaged. Once again, though, he's slowed, so all he gets to do is attack with twin axes. He will ignore this if engaged with 2 plus heroes, but there's something I forgot with Thorgar. Thorgar should have had to do a save for that impact, so let's start with that, and then we'll do the attack for uh, against Icarus. This is for Thorgar. He'll roll. He got a shield. So that means he failed at his uh, save roll. Now, this would also take into account he had used one of his armor. So I'm also going to roll this blue die for defense quick. And he rolled a shield for that. So he didn't take any more damage. But he is going to have to draw a critical. critical. And let's see. His critical he's going to take is oh, minus one to his armor. So he now has no armor. Oh, that's a bummer. His twin axe attack is one auto success, and he'll roll two red dice, and this is for Icarus, and he does get a lightning bolt, so that means lethal two. The nice thing is lethal uh, goes through armor, and it goes through your blue dice. You actually don't get to roll blue dice against it, but you still get to use magic armor. He's got magic or magic defense. He has one of those, so that'll block one, and there's two hits here two of them, so he takes no damage for that. But he's now going to have to save for that impact. He needs to roll a star, but he is one lucky son of a gun. And yes, he got it. I love Icarus. So he is not KO'd and he does not have to draw a critical. The Orc King will now discard his slowed token. I'm pretty sure I did not mention this. I needed to place this menace token with Icarus. So Icarus has this menace token. Our final activation this round is Ariel. I think I'm going to have her attack. I think it's worth it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our Thunderlord. We're going to focus for this. So that's one auto success. And then we are unfortunately not level five. We're only level four. So we're going to roll two red dice and one blue die. We're looking for a star and a lightning bolt. Let's see. We have a star and a star, no lightning bolt. Hmm. I think it's worth it. We want to KO him because we're going to have to subtract two of these hits. So let's go ahead and use our arcane robe and let's reroll this one. Wow, that's actually almost sad. I'm rerolling a hit. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> that worked though. 
That worked. We still got it. So we KO'd him. And that means his three armor doesn't do anything. But he does have his minus two hits. So these two are gone. We're only hitting him for one damage. He rolls one blue die for defense. And his lightning bolt does uh, it does count as one defense. The good thing is counterattack does not happen because it's only at a range zero. Uh, and since she didn't do any wounds, she won't have to grab the menace token from Icarus. Well, that wasn't as good as I was hoping, but <laughs> it is what it is. We'll draw our encounter card, activate one enemy. He's going to be activated. First things first, he is going to attack with Twin Axe, so that's going to give him one automatic success. He's going to roll two red dice against Icarus. Let's see. He gets a Lightning Bolt and three total hits, so that means two of those hits are going to go through. He has no magic defense, so he's going to take two damage. How I know it's two is because it says lethal two, so if that said lethal one, he'd take one damage. So Icarus takes an automatic two damage, the one damage that's remaining will be blocked by his armor, thank goodness. But now we have our impact, so we have to roll to save. We roll two dice for our save, and we don't get a star. Ah, oh, bummer. That means that we are KO'd, so we're going to be knocked over. And that means both Thorgar and Icarus are knocked over. And that also means we have to draw a critical token. Oh boy. Well, it was going well, <laughs> so we'll grab a critical token, and it is oh, minus one armor for him as well. Then we have a whirlwind effect, and this says, unless save, all heroes uh, in the area become blinded. So I believe I believe Icarus just has to be the one that saves, uh, and if he does not save, then it happens to both of them. So here's to looking for a star. Come on, star. We got a star. Awesome. We saved. Great. Then he's going to use Retreat, which is terrible. This enemy moves one area away and heals one HP per character. So we have three heroes, so he's going to heal three of his damage. I was hoping to prevent that, but it is what it is. Three damage is healed. That means he has 20 total damage out of 30. After knocking both of these guys down, he's going to jump away from them. <laughs> That's awesome. That will end this round. We'll go ahead and draw our event card. And we have Carnage. Until the next event phase, the first attack of each hero and enemy inflicts critical. <laughs> and we can ignore the spawning. Moving to the time phase, we will get to ready everything here. We've got our ice manipulator back. We have our dancing lights back. Uh, and we have our magic bolt back. <laughs> Ariel's going to have some fun. Also, uh, Icarus will heal one point of damage. Finally, our Orc King, during the time phase, will jump back over to his offensive side, which is good. I'm hoping that if I can activate Ariel first, with him having only 10 health left and 2 armor, we can maybe hit him super hard. He'll jump over to this, and then maybe uh, either Thorgar or Icarus, who are laying on the ground, can get back up and go ahead and take him out. We'll see if we can do it. We're going to start off with activating Ariel. First thing we're going to do is magic bolt this guy. He's within range 2. We're using this as a free action. He'll just suffer 2 HP. That means he has 22 damage, but he is going to get plus 1 to his attack because he just suffered wounds. Also, that means Ariel now has the Menace token. We're then going to Dancing Lights him and reduce his armor by 2 and reduce his attack by 2. But that also is going to take 2 rounds to come back. We're going to use her combat action to use her Ice Manipulator. We're going to focus it so we have three auto successes. We're within the range three. Remember, he has minus two armor. He still has one left. Let's see what we get. We're rolling four blue dice. He's immune to stun, so it's useless to go for that. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven total hits. With those seven hits, we also get to draw a critical, and we get minus two health. This might be it, I think. So we've got seven hits. He gets to roll one blue die for defense. He does get a defense, so he took six damage. I should mention we definitely got a lightning on one of those, and so he has no armor. So he has no armor. He had 10, 20, 22 because of our magic bolt. So he had 22 damage. We then drew this for his critical, so that puts him at 24. We just dealt him six damage. That is the 30 health right there. <laughs> I think we literally just took him out. That is awesome. So he's going to drop for us a treasure card. So let's see what he's going to give us. He's going to give us a ritual dagger. Cool. And then nine soul shards. We're, uh, that's going to give us ten total. So we don't, we're not able to level up Icarus quite yet, but that is still awesome. The fatal blow strikes the orc to the ground. The lifeless body immediately starts to burn with a black fire, and soon the once powerful king is nothing but charred shards of bones. 
Ogrim exits a cave and points at the ashes. This is the will of our god. He waves his hand and dispels the illusion, revealing the heroes in their true form. Wonder and rage spreads through the other orcs, but Ogrim firmly speaks. No true king of the Fangs would have been defeated by the people of inferior races. This creature was once our king, but dark and wicked powers corrupted his body and soul. That same power blinded all of us, a sorcery that forces them to find the source of this evil which corrupted our king. For this reason, they are free to leave our camp and return to their city with our peace offering. It is a peace that will last as long as the humans respect our land. Ogrim bids the heroes farewell, with a few last words. Seek the evil that brought our king to his doom. Seek it among those who command you. Keep the weapon I gave to you. It is a worthy token of our esteem, and accept these gifts as well. Farewell, heroes. When the heroes return to the city, they report to the guards, and then start looking for Jack Crow. He needs to answer so many questions. Yet the scoundrel seems to have disappeared, perhaps returning to the shadows. He commands. The following morning, Captain Anne personally greets the heroes. From now on, no one will doubt your valor and loyalty. In the name of the guard and the citizens of Twin Worms, I thank you, heroes. You will be the honored guests at the feast to be held 33 moons from now at the royal palace. Honor and glory to you. Rewards. Each hero gains one treasure card and one loot token. Proceed to expansions. Yes, and I'm definitely, you guys, <laughs> I just finished painting the demon guys, or the, uh, I think they're cultist guys, Arcane Portal. <laughs> I'm excited! We have our three loot tokens and our three treasures. This one will be for Icarus, this one will be for Ariel, and this one will be for Thorgar. Sure. <laughs> so, for Icarus, he's going to gain 50 coins, heck yeah. And let's see, what's his treasure? He gains another 100 coins. Awesome. So he just gained 150 coins. I like it. For Ariel, she will gain a treasure card. So we'll grab a treasure card. And she gains 100 gold. <laughs> I like those. I, I like money. Thank you. 100 bucks plus whatever this treasure card is. She gets a flaming sword. That sounds awesome. Uh, yeah. Ooh, this one Icarus could hold. One auto success, two red, two blue, fire two, once per round before an extra attack. Oh, is that better than the sea fin? Oh, that looks cool. Okay. And then for Thorgar, we have 20 coins and he gains the icy knives, which also Icarus could hold. Mm hmm. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That was act one of Sword and Sorcery. I had so much fun. I want to jump right into the arcane portals, but I do have a couple other games I have to record. Reichbusters being one, Don Shade being another. So I am planning, if I can, to be doing this kind of one a new game and then going back to Sword and Sorcery because I'm having so much fun with this. I know I need to get back to the Lord of the Rings saga as well. I'm going to get there, but right now I'm loving this. <laughs> and my plan is to kind of keep these player cards and everything out so it'll be easy for me to put this back on the table hopefully uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed that I hope you will join me on the arcane portals these are the guys that I just finished painting and I think they look pretty awesome if you ask me I love how they look from talking to Steve though they're pretty big jerks in the game they like to summon uh, demons and whatnot <laughs> well, we'll see uh, but I am I am excited do know though if you are gonna watch the arcane portals they are long scenarios from what I hear but you know what that's okay because I can play a couple rounds called a night then play a couple more rounds called a night so that's kind of how I'm thinking of doing it so Thank you so much for watching, and I am sorry if I made any errors. I tried my darndest. It's a lot to keep track of from a solo perspective, but I thought that was a pretty fun uh, boss fight. <laughs> I will catch you at the next stop.